Hello, we're going to take a look today at the Kato F7 freight train. It's Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. When we flip over on the box, on the back of the box, we can see the contents, uh, the consist of the train. Even though I don't believe the tank car should go behind the locomotive, I, I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be at least one car in between the tanker and the locomotive, but. Other than that, uh, it looks pretty good. And so here's some other related products. We're also going to take a look at the M2 track, which we have here. The Kato M2 set is basically the basic oval with the passing siding on it. So you've got an extra couple feet of track there to make it a little longer. And here it is set up a little bit differently. I've set this up to essentially equal a double loop because I've got the, the V5 variation also. And the V5 is an inner oval, so you've got enough track to go inside the M1 master set, create a double track. And if you look on back of the boxes, we can see how you can combine some of the Kato track sets to create different layouts. And each box of, of Kato trains or tracks comes with a, a nice little booklet that shows you exactly what you need to create each layout. A lot of good stuff in here, and I really am very happy with the Kato Unitrack. Additionally, today we're going to take a look at the Kato Santa Fe Super Chief N scale starter set. This also comes with uh, an M1 set of Unitrack, the basic oval. And again on the back it shows you the starter set with the track pack that comes with it. And this will come with the F7 locomotive and three passenger cars. Additionally we've got some other Kato products here. This tool is for separating the joiners. And that is a re-reeler, or actually a railer. We've got some bumpers. Here's the M2 set with the switches and the power pack that comes with it. And we're looking at the booklet that comes with the train set right now because it shows you all the different sidings, the different versions, the master sets, and all the different track packs you can get to set up your trains. Here I've got a back to back AA unit with the war bonnet and a blue bonnet. My experience with the Kato trains has been stellar. They run really smoothly. They hug the track. The Unitrack is so much better than the Bachman Easy Track. If you've had both, you will see a noticeable difference. You can get optional lighting, interior lighting for these cars, but this comes with uh, the tail lights on the observation car. The locomotives have directional lighting, by the way. So a few extra pieces of track here. We've got some uncoupling tracks. We've got the fitter sections and the bumpers I showed you before. And here's the CV3. This is the compact version. Also comes with a railer. All right, we'll go ahead and unpack this from the box. And one of the cool things about these Kato boxes is that there's a handy little drawer down on the bottom to store stuff in. So let's take a look at this. All right, we'll get this box unpacked, and this is just the instruction booklet that I showed you from the other the other set with the tool and the railer. We're going to go ahead and take the power pack and attach the switches, which I really like the switches for the Kados because they just attach directly to the power pack. You don't have to run extra wires. And we've also got the signal controller, so we're going to go ahead and put that together real quick. All right, we're going to go ahead and unpack the ATNSF freight set. This is the war bonnet variety. There's the blue bonnet and the war bonnet. They both have exactly the same cars, but it looks like different road numbers on the cabooses, at least. We're also going to hook up the light here for the signal. So it goes to the control box, which also goes back to 
the power on the transformer. So they sell the signal, but you also need to buy this control box and uh, the other little part that comes with it that you have to have, otherwise it won't work. Finally, we've got our railroad crossing. It's non-functional, so you put it together and it, it actually doesn't do anything other than sit there. And this here is the little piece of track that comes with the set that you plug the power cord into. So this is your lock on power or however, whatever you want to call it. But this is what goes Next to the power pack. Unbox the cars and use our little railer to put them on the tracks. Works really well. You just set it down on a, on a straight section and the car just rolls right on the track. And once we've got the passenger cars on, we're going to go ahead and set the freight cars on and set the freight train up over here on the passing siding. I'm going to try a double header here at AA with the two war bonnets I have, the one that came with the Super Chief and the one that came with the freight set. So we'll do a back-to-back, -back. and the Kados really work well when you consist the locomotives. They don't have different speeds. They work perfectly together. They're excellent and just perfectly matched. I'm very, very happy with the Kato locomotives that I've, I've purchased so far. Of course, now that I said that, I realized that one of these F7A units has a factory defect on the coupler. It's not broken, it's just a factory defect where it's sharpened to a point and doesn't work. So we're gonna take our RS3, put that on the freight line, and we'll take the blue bonnet and war bonnet and connect them together here, as you can see now. So one of the things I really like about the Kato is that when you put a train on a siding and throw the switches back to the main line, that immediately kills the power to the siding. So the trains will stay off and not run. Now you can run two train sets simultaneously. However, if you have a set of locomotives like the Super Chief set over here that tend to go a little bit faster than the RS3, you can have troubles. So you need to make sure that you've got a, an escape plan because otherwise you'll, you'll have a collision. So you need to be able to activate the switch beside one of the locomotives, and throw the switch back. So what happens is as soon as you activate both of those switches, you've got power to both lines. Even if you only have one switch, you've still got power to both lines. So it's very important that you throw both switches back to the main line once you've sidelined either either the uh, passenger side or the freight set. So it's a little tricky, but it's doable. I'll go ahead and sideline these two train sets and then I'm going to reconfigure the track and show you the other configuration that I find is, is pretty handy and also pretty fun. So let's get that track changed around. Here's a closer look at the signal. It has a, a pad on it so it notices when the train is on it and it goes to red. And then I think about five seconds later after the last car has cleared, the lights go to yellow 
and then to green. So here's a, another close look up of the switch setup. Turn the switches manually or with the remote. They've also got some extension wires or extensions to make the remote wire longer so that you can position it on the other side of the layout pretty easily with just a plug and play. So here's a look at the double oval and again you can sideline a train set, throw the switches back to the main line and that train will sit idle until such time that you activate the rails again. You can do this with a, a couple of blocks, You could, and as in insulated blocks, you can have a couple power packs. There's a lot of different ways you can configure this, but with one power pack and no insulated blocks, it's a little tricky if you've got two trains running, but it, it can be done, uh, especially if you've got two trains that run a little bit differently as far as speed goes. But uh, shockingly, this is the first Kato train set I've gotten that, that came with some issues. It's the, the F7 a warp on it with a broken coupler straight from the factory so we're going to send that back we've also got the M1 the M2 the Super Chief set and again the ATSF freight set thanks for watching stick around for some more of my train videos if you haven't already please take a moment and subscribe to the channel and again thank you for watching I'll see you next time